Hello everyone, Argzy here. Today we're taking a look at a brand new mod for Farming Simulator 22. Now this is called Conservation Agriculture and is by Farm Sim Tim. Now it is a script mod so will be only available for PC. You can currently download it from GitHub. Uh, these are some beta versions so you will be getting updates quite frequently through there but it has also been submitted to Giants for testing and fingers crossed we will see it released on the mod hub sometime in the future but like I said it is a PC only mod. So I hear you ask what is conservation agriculture and what does it bring to Farming Simulator 22? Well firstly to answer that question we're going to take a look at conservation agriculture in a real world context. There's three principles to conservation agriculture and Farm Sim Tim has provided some really good information and there's a few links in the description of the video to the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations. And in there, they have three principles of conservation agriculture. The first being minimum mechanical soil disturbance, e.g. no tillage through direct seed and or fertilizer placement. The second one, permanent soil organic cover. So that's putting your crop back into the ground and using that organic cover from crop residue and or cover crops in the soil. And thirdly is species diversification. So through varied crop sequences and associations involving at least three different crop types. So talking about crop rotation and varying the type of crop that's planted in the soil to change the way those crops use the nutrients and leave nutrients back in the ground. So that is the very simple idea of conservation agriculture. There is, like I said, a lot more information that you can go into and uh, I suggest you do if you're interested in this go and have a look at it because there is quite a lot there that we could really go quite deep into but today we're taking a look at the mod and how that is going to introduce the principles of conservation agriculture to Farming Simulator 22. Put simply the general idea is to never leave your fields barren but instead you'd seed oilseed radish grass or even grain or root crops directly after harvesting your cash crop and use those as a cover crop across winter. In spring you'd mulch them in instead of harvesting them in order to get a mulching and fertilizing boost for your new cash crop, effectively simulating some of those principles of conservation agriculture that we just took a look at. This would see you have a typical field work cycle, something like this. You'd harvest your cash crop, you'd apply some lime to the ground, you'd direct seed a cover crop into the ground, let that grow. Once it's ready you can roll and or mulch it. This will give you the mulching and fertilizing bonus and then you'd direct seed or plant a different crop into it. And this looks after the weeds and the remaining nitrogen and you then let it grow until it's ready to harvest and start on that cycle over and over and over again. So what are the main features of the mod and we'll get into looking in these in just a little bit of detail very very soon and it will all become a little bit clearer. But firstly roller crimping of cover crops and direct seeding straight into them. You can roll mulch or direct seed into cover crops and receive a fertilization and mulching bonus. Uh, you can create fields with direct seeders, so basically get rid of your plough for good. There is precision farming support and there is a number of configuration options for you to adjust what you think is realistic. So if you don't want to be able to create fields with a direct seeder, you can turn that option off altogether. Well I think that is enough talking, let's go and take a look at how this will work with the base game and then we'll go and take a look at how it works with the precision farming installed as well. So I've got three pieces of equipment set up here in front of me. We have a mulcher, we have a field roller, not a grass roller, it is a land roller, and we've also got the Horsch direct seeder there from the Horsch DLC. And then on the other side here, we've got three fields set up. Down the bottom, we have a grass field that has been harvested effectively, so it's been mown and the grass has been taken off it, so it's basically in its first growth state. We've got another grass field here in front of us, which is ready to harvest. It's been fully grown. And then up the top there we also have a oilseed radish field so we will go and take a look at how this works in all three different stages how all the different pieces of equipment provide different bonuses and things like that so we'll go and make a start and uh, have a look and see what happens so starting off down here in the grass field that has been mowing i'm just going to run all three pieces of equipment 100 meters or so just along the field and then we'll be able to take a look in the pda and what impact they have had now this is a little bit of a control test just to give a starting point that we can then compare the results on the other fields. So there we are, all three tractors run down the field a little bit. Let's go and take a look at the PDA and see what it shows. So firstly you can see here on the growth screen we have planted our wheat. That is that strip there which is growing. Uh, obviously nothing behind the other two but if we have a look here now at the soil composition you can see that our mulcher has mulched the grass as you would expect. That is the purpose of the mulcher in the base game but the roller 
and the cedar have had no impact there on the fertilized state or the mulch state. So we will go and have a look now. We're going to go up into the middle of these fields. I'm going to drive across the grass and the radish, oilseed radish field at the same time and see what the results are when we do it in there. So we'll start off here with the mulcher, run this across the grass and the oilseed radish and as you would expect we are getting that mulch state there with the grass getting uh, squashed down into the ground, mulched up and turned into some crop residue. We'll move across here you'll see it will have the impact there on the meadow grass that is on the edge of the track and also as we get into the oilseed radish we get the exact same effect so that is what you would expect from a mulcher running in base game. We'll jump down now and have a look at the roller. So with the roller down and moving along you'll see the difference compared to the previous field as we're also getting a mulched effect here from the roller just as we did with the mulcher. Now as we carry on up we're going to go across the border of the field you'll notice that the field grass or meadow grass sorry that's on the border of this track here doesn't actually get affected there so it is only working on any crops that are in the correct state using the conservation agriculture mod. So you can see there also the oilseed radish as well. So that is obviously a very glaring difference. Now we're going to jump into the cedar and see what that does. We turned on, lowered down and we're going to run up here and seed some wheat in both fields. Now it looks exactly as you would expect. We're getting a seed bed effect there with the uh, crop residue and everything in it. Is, uh, always a nice little texture. We'll just carry on across there and get some planted into the oilseed radish. And once we've done that, we will go and take a look at the PDA. So I think the picture says enough there about the difference that the different tools bring now with conservation agriculture. Mulcher there gets the mulch bonus as you would expect, but you can also see that the roller now in those growing crops using conservation agriculture will give you the mulch bonus. And also the cedar there. Remember it doesn't have any fertilizer equipped in it, has given us the first stage fertilizing bonus. On top of that, if we turn off the mulch state, you can see we've also got that fertilizer bonus from both of the roller and the mulcher. So you are getting much more benefit from your cover crop than you would have just in base game. In base game, by plowing in that cover crop, we would have got the fertilizer benefit, but we wouldn't have got the mulch benefit unless we mulched it first. So there's some real benefits to doing this. Now there's actually some mods out there that you could conceivably front mount a roller on the front of the tractor and roller crimp it as you go through and seed. So there's some really good options out there for how that all works. So I think uh, it's a fantastic little addition and makes cover crops viable again. I also did say that you can customize this as much as you want. So just taking a look here in the menu under general settings right down the very bottom it's added all these options. So you can go through they're very self-explanatory uh, if you don't want to be able to use a field roller to crimp the crop off, we could turn that off and it wouldn't do it. If you don't want the mulching bonus from a roller, you can turn that on and off. If you wanted a mulching bonus from using a cedar, for example, that Horsch cedar, which does actually have the tie rollers on the front, the way I have it configured, you could say, well, I'm rolling it. Let's give us the mulching bonus for doing that. If you don't want to be able to control weeds, you can turn that on and off. Uh, whether you want the field creation with your cedar, have that on and off as well. Uh, the idea here with roller crimping drops grass is explained here. If enabled, roller crimping and mulching will drop the grass on the ground in order to simulate the presence of biomatter. So again, that's just a simulation thing. The intention would not be that you would then go and pick that up using a forage wagon or something like that to convert it into hay or silage. And then for base game, you've got the fertilization behavior. So first fertilizer stage or full fertilizer. So again, depending on what you want to do, you can have it turned off. Or you could say, let's do all the fertilizing through that. So some good options there and the ability to make it as realistic as you want for the play style that you want to have. Now just to demonstrate as well the create fields with a direct seeder, we'll just turn that off and lower it down there. You'll see at the moment we're not creating any fields. If I flick the button to turn that on, you can see that our direct seeder is now going through and creating a field. So again, simulating the returning that grass into the ground as organic matter being able to direct seed and use a no-till type methodology for planting crops into a new field area. So again, clever little way to bring those principles of conservation agriculture into Farming Simulator 22. So that's how it works in a base game. Let's go and reset our save. We'll bring it up with Precision Farming and take a very quick look at how the different fertilization states work in that and give that a very brief explanation as well. 
So we're back here in the same fields with precision farming now enabled and if I just bring up the precision farming menu you can see there saw types and things, our pH but most importantly our nitrogen. You can see there pretty much across the whole field it's either got 0 or 20 kilograms a hectare of nitrogen and that's important to know because we're just going to take a look at what the impact that the three different tools have on those nitrogen levels. So we'll very quickly race through, we'll mulch, roll and plant and then take a look at that once we're finished. So there we go, we've done all three of those tasks, so let's have a look at the map and see what the difference is. So firstly, you can see there, we're still getting the same mulched effect from both the mulcher and the roller, and of course no mulching there from the planter as we explained earlier. We could have turned that on in the settings, but we've left that off. But the real magic here is when we look at precision farming. And you can see there, we've got about 120 and 80, so we've boosted our nitrogen by quite a significant amount, depending on which part of the field we were on, whether it was the 20 or the 0 kilograms. Uh, the way that Farm Sim Tim has set this up is to provide the base game nitrogen requirements for sunflowers, which is the lowest of any crop requiring nitrogen, other than of course soybeans, which are a zero nitrogen crop. So by mulching in and planting into your cover crop, you're going to get the nitrogen boost that, soy, uh, that sunflowers would give you. So it's not going to give you a full boost that wheat or a corn crop would require. You're still going to have to boost your nitrogen after planting to do that, but it does give you more then if you were just ploughing in your cover crop, I believe precision farming only gives 20 kilograms a hectare for ploughing in a cover crop. So it's really no benefit to doing that. You're still having to put on quite a lot of nitrogen to get even up to the base requirements for sunflowers. So I think the way that FarmSim Tim has used the sunflowers as the base requirement for nitrogen boosting and precision farming is quite a clever way to do that. So there you go, that is a mod preview of the Conservation Agriculture mod for Farming Simulator 22 by Farm Sim Tim, a PC only script mod currently available on GitHub and also being tested by Giants to hopefully be released on the Mod Hub. A uh, fantastic little mod which I think makes cover crops relevant. Uh, previously there really wasn't that much incentive to use them but by some of these simple techniques, by being able to mulch, roll, direct seed into and getting a better fertilizer bonus and potentially a mulch bonus as well really justifies the use of cover crops in between your cash crops and the fact it could be grass it could be wheat it could be any other crop it doesn't just have to be all so radish i think also gives some really good flexibility so i think it's uh, really well put together won't be everyone's cup of tea i understand people are probably not interested in this type of farming but i think the flexibility it gives to the game and new avenues it opens up for players i think it's fantastic so uh, hopefully see it released on Mod Hub soon and uh, be able to get some good feedback from you all. So again, I hope you've found that useful. Thank you all very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.